Shalom Rastafari Greetings This is Wendem Yadin And we would like to begin with this particular presentation Which we're going to entitle um, Osiris Osar The original deadbeat baby father or We can call him the original deadbeat Black deadbeat um, dad and there's a very important reason for us um, seeking to present this particular lecture. Now, there's a couple of different formats that we could have done this particular lecture in, but we're choosing this type of a presentation to at least begin off this particular presentation. Um, we were going to use a series of uh, a slide presentation like we've done some of the other videos. However, this should be a good way to at least start off with some of the summary ideas. There's a lot that's involved in this particular subject matter, as this particular subject matter has everything to do with our present situation and condition as a, as a, as a people. The present status quo, which... Um, may be defined and we need to define the terminologies that we are utilizing and when we say status quo the status quo is technically um, defined as the existing the existing state of things and the existing state of things that we are existing in the present status the standing of things that we're existing in is a is a white supremacist or we could say a racist um, standard. So when we speak about racism, we're speaking about racism from the particular perspective that and defining it, racism is defined as white supremacy. Now, of course, some people say anybody can be racist so forth and so on, but what they don't understand when they begin off by saying that anybody can be racist, not only so-called white people, we recognize that's not only white people that may project what is ignorantly termed uh, racism. See, we have to understand the definition of, of words, and the word is very, very important. It's like in this society, in law, when you use words in law, and law governs this particular society, and law governs any civilized, um, organized society, and we're under the Gentile world domination, under white supremacy, under a global racist and fascist status, status quo. And when we say status quo, um, from the Latin Literally, status quo means the state in which, the state in which. So it's the existing state of affairs at a particular time. So the existing state of affairs at this particular time. So we seek to call this particular lecture Osiris or Osar, the original deadbeat baby father. Now, of course, most need to understand, well, who is Osar? Now, this is one of the original and, and earliest prototypical, prototypical images of Osar right here. We have two images of Osar, and this could be categorized under the subject matter of, under the subject matter of Egyptology, loosely speaking under Egyptology, but it has everything to do with the Bible as we're entering into a particular season right now that's known as Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur is interpreted to be the day, the Yom of the Kippur. Kippur from the Hebrew doesn't literally mean atonement. That's another related lecture there and another subject matter this is a subset so we take notes and some of these notes if we were to organize this and put this into some sort of a 
using the technology now, it would be under a cascade. You know what a cascade is. Like when if I open this right here, these windows come down into a cascade. As you can see, the open files up here, it comes down to a cascade. And then under some of these would be like subgroupings. Like under here would be some subgroupings, so forth and so on. Now, like I said, there's a lot in this particular subject matter, but I want this idea to at least rest within your mind for a moment. It was entertain this particular idea that the one whom is called, according to the Greek version of the story, Osar, who's called Osiris in the Greek. Originally, Osar, and there's a debate about exactly how his name would have been understood is connected with this particular season that we know as Yom Kippur when we go back to the origination of what's known as the mythos or the f formative ideas Acts of the Apostles chapter 7 verse 22 says that Moses was learnt in the wisdom, all of, all of the wisdom of the Egypts on your Bibles, the Egyptians, but of the Egypts, and he was mighty in word and deed. So he was more familiar with the original essence of these ancient, what's called today, mythologies concerning Osar and concerning Osed and Ptah and the so-called gods or the religion or the spirituality of ancient Egypt and this is one reason why many who have studied this subject matter can find correspondences in the Bible now where many people get confused or they confuse themselves either ignorantly or willingly is you have two groups of people you have many of my Afrocentric uh, peoples on one side who would say that everything in the Bible was just plagiarized and copied and taken from ancient Egypt and then you have the people on the biblical side and even some of them on the Judaica side that would say that the Torah, Old Testament, and the Bible and Christianity has nothing to do with Egypt because Egypt was all paganism, was all heathenism, so forth and so on. And what's in the Bible is totally estranged from that. Both of those views are the extremes. Both of those views are the extremes of a mental, spiritual, uh, psychological disorder concerning this particular subject matter. In other words, both of the extremes. The extreme that says, on one hand, that Egyptology um, has nothing to do with uh, the Bible, and those who say that everything in the Bible and the scriptures was just copied and plagiarized and Moses stole this and Moses stole that, so forth and so on. It's very serious to make a charge of, of stealing and theft. Now, some would say, well, look at this and look at that. Does it, isn't this similar? So that means that this must have been taken from that. When the very language and ideas that we use in this present society was existing before most of us were born or incarnated and before we came here. So does that mean that the ideas that we take to express or explain or describe ourselves, life, or other things, we are plagiarizing these ideas when we take the language that we use? We, we, we didn't create a language when we were born. Most of us didn't even create any kind of religion or spiritual idea, but we take from here and there and we try to make sense out of these things. So it's it's a very serious charge right there of of theft, especially on the on on the part um concerning our lawgiver concerning Moshe or that black man in ancient times known as Moses now that being said, just to try to lay this out as I said from the very beginning, there's a lot that is connected with this particular idea and i I'm not going to bemuse myself or seek to bemuse any of you all that we're going to be able to get through all of what is embedded in this idea. We're trying to unembed as much as we can in this idea. But the main point, starting out the subject matter of this, is concerning this idea of the black man 
and the deadbeatness of the black man, which seems to be a a shadow of a of an old of an old accusation by the accuser of our brother, biblically speaking, the accuser of our brother, our brother being that that black man, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, accuser Satan. In ancient Egypt, the accuser of our brother, who you see pictured right here, Osiris or Osar, was his evil brother, for lack of a better word, was his evil brother, known as Sut. Let's see if we can bring up Sut or or, or Set or, or, or Shet. Now, this is Sut, this is Shet, or this is Seti, Sut. And from Sut or Seth, do we get Sut on? And in the Hebrew, do we get Satan, the Satan? Now, there's another picture, a closer upper picture. Let's see if we can bring this um, close-up picture. We have a lot of data here. And let's see if we can bring this, um, the companion picture. Oh, that's the same. That's the same one right there. Okay, it should be in this one. Okay, here we go. This is This is a... A profile view of of um, suit right here. Here we got suit. So we have suit on one side, who would be the prototypical devil suit right here. This is suit, and then we have his brother Osar. Now let's give you the story behind this because it's important for us to lay out the story, the context of what we are presenting right here, the context, as well as what does this have to do with the Day of Atonement. Now, this image right here, as you probably have seen this, this image right here is uh, some of the images of, of lynching. So this is we're going from the mythological and showing how the mythological has become historical. Some believe that it was the history that was mythologicalized, the history that was mythologicalized. Here we see a historical image of a man being lynched and a man being burnt to death, in a sense, by his evil brothers or by the, the Sami, or the Sebal, the companions or the followers of the modern day Sutan or Satan or white supremacy, to put it in other terms. Now, this particular book here, let's see if we can show you the title of this particular book here. This is the, the ISIS Papers, the ISIS Papers, the, key, the, key, the Keys to the Colors by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. It's a very, very important book um, to read and to study by this sister here. This is Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. Some of you might be familiar with her works. Some might not. This work is filed under African American Studies and Psychology and this particular book is the Third World Press. Now, it's important to note this book is filed under African American Studies and Psychology because there's a lot of psychology to the mythology. There's a lot of psychology to the mythology. The mythology was a way of encoding the ancient stories and even the history and embedding in those stories everything from the from the psychological, historical, spiritual, metaphysical, everything was embedded in those symbols or types. In the Bible, they call these symbols and types, they call them parables, Christ spoke in parables. I like to say that the parables, for purposes of our studies and lectures, are verbal hieroglyphics, 
when Christ spoke his parables, and when we look at the parables in the scriptures, they are basically verbal hieroglyphics. What the hieroglyphics were in a visual, figurative sense that you can see symbolized were turned into the word, which is a higher level. So you, one that would have to take the word now and be able to see the word symbolically, in other words, have this vision within their minds. In other words, have to turn the word visually. But not everyone is able to hear the word and see the proper visual representations. It's like with children. They give children cartoons or they use cartoons. Some say that ancient Egypt was that level of humanity's childhood and that at that early stage it was important and necessary to use picture types in order to demonstrate these central primordial truths through through these um, symbolic symbolical representations. But let's give you the background story on the Lord of the Perfect Black, who was known as Osiris to the Greeks and as Osar, Osar to the ancient Kemetians or the ancient Gutawians or the ancient Egyptians. To understand and begin to understand what we mean when we say that Osiris is the prototype of the deadbeat, the so-called deadbeat father, the deadbeat black male. All right? Like we said, Francis Cresswell sings Isis Papers helps to provide the psychological underpinning of the understanding in the context both then and now. Now, there's a, there's a particular area here that we just want to touch on where in her book, um, Isis Paper, Papers, um, in the chapter that is entitled Black Child Hyphen Parents, The New Factor in Black Genocide. It's called Black Child Hyphen Parents, the new factor in black genocide. And on page 263, she says, in the Old Testament of the Bible, the prophet Isaiah, or Esaias in the Amharic, or Yeshayahu, which means uh, salvation of Yah, salvation of Jah, says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Vision means the ability to understand the present in its totality and to organize one's behavior in the present to meet successfully the challenge of circumstance, present and future. A people that does not understand and thus fails to teach each generation that potential mothers and fathers must be able to carry out certain basic functions going far beyond mere material provisions in relationships with their children is a people without vision, a people amongst whom just anyone produces a child at any time without any serious thought or consideration, without any group recognized standard for parenthood, is a people on the brink of disaster. Black people in the U.S. are at such a crisis point. And this is just a brief excerpt from the ISIS papers by Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, and that was page 263. We, we thought this was important for us to note this at this particular point in our lecture on Osiris, the original um, deadbeat um, black father or baby father, 
as you would have it, as we now start to compare past and present and ask ourselves how have things changed or rather how things are so much of the same and have not really changed. What has happened is that the people do not have vision. In ancient Egypt, they called vision re, or some would say ra. And Ra was the grandfather, or some say the great-grandfather, of the Lord of the Perfect Black that we know as Osiris or Osar, that Re or Ra. So Re actually means, when they say the sun god, they like to say that Ra was the sun god, the sun god, the sun god. But the real meaning of Ray or Roi meant to see and to see the vision and to have the, according to Francis Cress Wellsing's definition, the ability to understand the present in its totality and to organize one's behavior in the present to meet successfully the challenge of circumstance present and future. Now, if you study the scriptures, you'll find that prophets originally were called bale rai or those who possessed, those who had or those who possessed the vision, the seers. They were called seers, those who possessed the ability to see. Now, one would be rather amazed when one studies some of the documentation out there um, that the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, who basically named Osar, who you see pictured before you, the statue of Osar or Osiris, they call him Osiris, but his name more correctly would have been something to the effect of Osar, that the Greeks, they were unfamiliar with the concept of an afterlife until they were introduced or rather until they were initiated in the Egyptian mysteries or rather in the ancient Kometian spirituality, which they call the Egyptian mysteries. Now, these mysteries, at the, at the, at the core of them, they concerned what is known as, they call her the goddess, Isis and her consort, the God-man, or the man-god, Osiris, the lord of the perfect black. Now, many authors and writers about ancient Egypt, they think that Osar, Osiris, and, and Isis, or Oset, that they were mythical figures. In other words, they were just figures that the ancient Egyptians made up to tell stories. But what we've learned from our studies have shown and proves that Osar and Oset, they were historical figures. Now, how does one even begin to reconcile this discrepancy? Well, first of all, the Greeks were at the early point of the Gentile world domination or at an early point of what now has become known as white supremacy slash racism. Now, after some searching, one would find different traditional stories concerning, you know, Isis and Osiris and, and what happened. What's interesting is that there's very few complete stories, but there's different interpretation of stories. I often compare it to Christianity, but I'm not going to go into that comparison right, right now. But just like there is, there is the Catholic, the strict Catholic interpretation of Christianity, and then there is the Protestant Reformation to Christianity. If one were to go a thousand years in the future, and find some fragments from Catholic doctrine and find some more fragments from Protestant doctrine and would say, well, both of them claim to be Christian to some extent, right? But they both interpreted Christ 
and Christianity in vastly different ways. This is what happens when one comes across ancient Egyptian um, fragments and hieroglyphs and, and stories and, and other archaeology and, and grave robbing and tomb robbing is that they'll find different stories or different religions or different denominations. There were different denominations even among the ancient Egyptians. And Isis and Osiris or Osiris and Isis, they were much like our, on one hand, you can say Adam and Eve in the Bible. But how one viewed Adam and Eve, even today among Christians and non-Christians, how they view Adam and Eve, even using the same Bible, it differs according to the different interpretation. I just want you all to keep that in mind because the context is very, very important. But let's touch briefly on the legend of Osiris. Let's, let's get an overview of the legend of Osiris. I like what Dr. Francis Cress Welsing presents in her book, near the beginning of it and the context that she gives to her book because her book helps us to see the past and the present within the context of, of reality. So while we're studying ancient Egypt, we can also see it in the context of what's going on with black people in the present time. And in the first part of her book, the Isis papers, the keys to the colors, she has on page VII or page 7 in the preface, she says, finally, the time has come for unveiling the true nature of white supremacy, which in parentheses she has as racism. So when we say white supremacy, we mean racism. When we say racism in the present context, according to the vision, we mean white supremacy. So do not make any mistake about it. For this reason, I have entitled this work, The Isis or Isis Papers, The Keys to the Colors. Isis was the most important goddess of ancient Africa, especially Egypt. She was the sister wife of the most important Egyptian god, Osiris, quote, Lord of the perfect black, end quote, and the mother of Horus. In the astral interpretation of the Egyptian gods, Isis was equated with the dog star Sirius, or what the Egyptians called or the Greeks call, based on the Egyptians, a Sothis. According to the ancient African story, after the murder and dismemberment of Osiris by his evil brother Set, or Seth, or Sut, Isis discovered the crime, recovered the pieces of the body of Osiris, and put them together again, restoring his existence and his power. According to legend, Isis admired truth and justice and made justice stronger than silver and gold or than gold and silver. And she says in the next paragraph, she says, the brief paragraph says, in, this, in the present era or the present status quo, I'm adding status quo, she didn't write that, but the present era that we live in is the present status quo, i.e. the Gentile world domination, white supremacy, or racism. Truth and justice have been crushed by the global power system of white supremacy making the existence of peace on the planet impossible under this reign of terror. The attempt in this work to reveal some aspects of the in-depth truth about the white supremacy power system for the ultimate purpose of establishing justice and peace in the world is in the tradition of the great African goddess Isis. And as I mentioned before, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, I regard and we regard to be in the positive 
sense of ISIS because there's a, there's a later versions or perversions of ISIS, just like there's the later perversions of, of, of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the whitewashing, and the later perversions of, of his mother, Kedistin Gudamariam, um, the whitewashing, and there's other additional extra biblical kind of makeup stuff that a lot of Christians, especially uh, so-called Christians, especially the Catholics, in other words, the Catholic Madonna, is not our mama. The the Catholic uh, Zeus or Jesus 